My name is Sherea Cook. I am an assistant director of admissions here at Westminster College and also the top scholar recruiter. I actually went to Westminster College. I graduated from here in 2008 with my undergraduate degree in philosophy. Um, but with me today we have a current student and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Yes, my name is Annie Brings and I am a current student here at Westminster. I am from Salt Lake City, Utah, so this is my hometown and I am a sophomore studying theater. Well, today we're going to talk about the three biggest reasons why students choose to come to Westminster College. As you know, doing your college search, there are a lot of reasons for you to choose a school, um, but we're going to single out three reasons that students have told us have been important to them in choosing Westminster. But first, before we get started on those three, um, let's give you a little bit of background, the fast facts about Westminster College. Uh, first of all, Westminster is the only private, comprehensive, independent liberal arts college in the state of Utah. We were founded in 1875, and currently we have about 2,300 undergraduate students and about 900 graduate students. We have about 70 academic programs, and these are broken up into four different schools. A school of business, a school of nursing, a school of education, and a school of arts and sciences. Uh, the school of arts and sciences includes programs like pre-med, pre-law, um, our, our philosophy and psychology, communications, things along those lines. Also central to who Westminster is, is our location. At Westminster, we truly have the best of both worlds. Uh, we have both the amazing outdoor recreation and the wilderness right next door, and we're in a city environment too. So first, we're located just 15 minutes from downtown Salt Lake City. Um, Salt Lake City was the host of the 2002 Winter Olympics, and largely because of that event, Salt Lake City has blossomed into a, a wonderful metropolitan area with increasing diversity. Here at Westminster, our students can take advantage of the state government opportunities, the um, Center for Banking, the Center for Healthcare, um, of all the, the amenities that come with a Metropolitan Center, like a public transportation system, professional athletics, the arts, the list goes on. Um, as students at Westminster, uh, you're able to take advantage of these things through internships, through um, research opportunities, networking opportunities, um, cultural and service opportunities, um, plus, the area is really accessible. We're only 20 minutes from the Salt Lake International Airport, and as a student here, you get a free transit pass, so you can get around the city quite easily. On campus, we help you take advantage of our city location through several different resources, like our Career Resource Center, our Campus Concierge, um, and our active classes that engage with the city around us. Um, we'll talk more about those active classes later, uh, but for now, it's important to know that Westminster isn't just an urban campus. Secondly, we're also a campus that's perfectly located to take advantage of our, what we call, ecological wonderland. Um, we're right next to the Great Salt Lake, um, the Rocky Mountains, which our site is called the Wasatch Front, and we're just a few hours away from over 10 um, national and state parks. Um, so, right here on our campus, you have 30 to 45 minutes, and you will be in around seven world-class ski resorts. And we're only five to 10 minutes away on a bike to the Wasatch Front. We're literally right next to the Rocky Mountains. In addition, um, Utah is also very well known for its, its active lifestyle, um, all the things that you can do in the mountains. We were recently ranked as one of the best states to live in by Forbes, and Salt Lake City was ranked as the fittest city in the nation by Men's Fitness. Um, so a lot of our students take advantage of our outdoor um, location uh, through our ski and snowboard club, our outdoor recreation program. And we get Westminster discounts passes to um, some of the local ski resorts like Brighton or the Canyons or Park City or Snowbird. Um, and we also have a lot of research opportunities that combine with our outdoor location, such as our Great Salt Lake Institute, which is an organization that enables our students to do leading research out on the Great Salt Lake and in that really unique ecosystem. Um, here at Westminster, because of our location, you can really maximize how and what you learn. Um, last but not least, our students really benefit from the very area that Westminster is in. Um, it's this location we call Sugar House. It's kind of nestled in the middle of downtown Salt Lake City and the mountains um, to our, our east. And Sugar House is known as the funky, eclectic, kind of diverse part of Salt Lake City. Um, many say that Sugar House has a college town feel to it. Everything you need is within walking distance of campus, whether restaurants or movie theaters, the park that's nearby, um, healthcare facilities, everything you need is within walking distance, just like a small town. 
and in large part the community um, really plays into Westminster's location. Sugar House has a tight, intimate community like you'd expect in a small town. Um, so ultimately our location, whether it's Sugar House, our outdoor um, opportunities, or the fact that downtown Salt Lake City is right next door, uh, really plays into who Westminster is. Speaking of who Westminster is, Annie, I'm curious, why did you choose to come to Westminster? Well, I actually chose to come to Westminster because I came on a tour, came on a campus tour, and I absolutely fell in love with the campus and with the people. And I just knew right off the bat that I would be really supported and that I could accomplish any of my goals on this campus at this college. That's awesome. So you had that feeling when you absolutely came on campus. loved it. A lot of students. A lot of students say that. <laughs> yeah. um, to go a little bit further into that, you mentioned you took a tour. Mm -hmm. So coming to our location was really important for you. Absolutely, and I'm quite familiar with the Sugar House neighborhood, but I had actually not really been on Westminster's campus at all. So Sugar House plus Westminster was just awesome. What's your favorite thing about Sugar House and plus Westminster? Um, I really love that it is an independent neighborhood. A lot of the you know, facilities that we have nearby are like local and um, they're independent Utah businesses, which I really love. So it gives it that funky, like eclectic feel because there's a lot of diversity. Awesome. Awesome. Makes for a fun college experience. So if you want to come feel that, come visit our campus and you can see what Annie was talking about as well. Um, now that we've given you kind of the basics about Westminster, let's delve into those three biggest reasons that students do choose to come to Westminster. Um, first of all, we'll talk about our active approach to learning. Um, secondly, we'll look at our community in a little bit more depth. Um, we say we've got a really vibrant community. And third, we'll look at our strong record of preparing our students for success. Um, so first, our active approach to learning. Um, at Westminster, you learn in a different way than what you might expect in a college scenario. Um, we're a small private liberal arts college that has expert professors here. Um, and our expert professors serve as mentors and guides, not just brilliant sages on the stage, um, as you might hear some college professors refer to at other institutions. Um, how do we help our expert professors serve as your mentors and guides? Well, first of all, um, we make sure they're incredibly accessible. At Westminster, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Our average class here is about 17 students. Um, nearly 90% of these professors have the highest degree they can possibly get in their field. And the professors here are known for being invested in student success. Um, accessible is a great way to describe our professors here. Um, and I, I see you're nodding your head, Annie. Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your relationships with your professors. Well, I have, um, you know, grown to love many of the professors on campus. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a theater major, so I'm especially close with my theater professors, um, Michael and Nina Vo, and they really helped nurture me. You know, I came in my freshman year, and I was really nervous about this whole college experience, and they were the people that actually really reached out to me initially, and I knew. Um, that they would support me in you know pretty much anything I wanted to do. I really feel like I have sort of a safety space with them where you know if anything's going wrong in my personal life, in my academic career, I know that I have people to turn to if I need any support or if I need some guidance and help. How long do you think it took you to develop that relationship with your professors? I would say less than three weeks. I mean, it was immediate. I just felt this amazing connection. And it was not only with my theater professors. Um, you know, it was also with a lot of the honors professors and just generally. So being a liberal arts college, you know, of students here do take classes outside of their major. Mm -hmm. Like you said, in addition to theater, you have some honors classes as well. Absolutely. Can you tell us about one of your other professors you've developed a relationship with? Um, you know, I am really consistently impressed with the honors professors and um, as a freshman in the honors program I took a humanities class as all freshmen have to and they really benefited from the guidance of Richard Bodenhausen and Nick Moore um, they really helped me like hone in on some writing skills and again I felt like if I needed to I could go to them with any problems I was having academically or socially. Yeah I remember that I actually way back when when I was a student here I was in the honors program too and um, Nick Moore and Richard Bodenhausen were, were teaching those classes as well. They teach other classes on campus too. Um, Nick Moore is a philosophy professor and Richard often teaches English classes or history, things along those lines. Um, but they were the same with me as well. I remember when I was a freshman, I was brand new. We had to write these two-page papers every week, seemingly insignificant, but they were so invested in not just my papers, but in me learning to be a better writer. Um, so you probably remember situations where you could go sit down with your professor one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I remember 
three weeks into, class, into my freshman semester, sitting down with Nick Moore one-on-one -on -one to talk about this silly two-page paper, but he spent an hour with me, and that wasn't an unusual occurrence. Absolutely, and I've had the exact same experience um, with those two-page papers, those prompts, um, and being able to go in and directly converse with the professors about them was so beneficial, and they really do. I mean, when you receive your papers back, they're covered in really helpful notes. It's not like they just put a grade at the top and say, that's how you did. They actually want you to really progress as a writer and as a learner. Yeah, uh, that's excellent. That's a good example of how the professors really invest in our students here. Um, so I would say key to Westminster's learning environment, that active approach is the fact that professors are actively engaging with you um, as a student here. But our active approach is more than that. Um, our active approach plays into how you learn in the classroom here. Uh, so as I mentioned, our average class size here is about 17 students. That's a true average. We cap most of our classes at 25. You will honestly be in a class that's small enough where you can get to know your professors well. But like I said, it's more than just the relationship with the professors. Here, you're going to learn in a way where you're engaged in the classroom. Our, our, our professors tailor their learning to meet the needs of the students in that actual class. Um, in addition, they try to help you to um, learn through experiential opportunities, such as discussions and debates and group projects, um, research projects. For our science students, you're in the lab first day of the class. We have what's called a fully integrated lab approach, um, where you're doing the inquiry rather than just being told what, what's what about science. You're doing science. Similarly in our humanities-based classes, most of your classes are probably discussion-based? Absolutely, all of them. Okay, <laughs> so a lot of active learning happens within the classroom here. And what happens in that sort of learning environment is as a student, you not only get to know your professors and get to know the students in the class, but you're able to develop a set of what we call transferable skills that are incredibly important to your success later on in life. And even in college, um, these transferable skills are things like um, critical analysis, problem solving, the ability to collaborate, the ability to have reflective capacities, to understand diversity, and to be able to um, navigate successfully through diverse cultures and situations. These set of skills that we really emphasize at Westminster is actually part of our campus-wide learning goals. If you come visit campus, you walk around campus, you'll see these pillars that are, we've erected across campus, and they list these learning goals as central to who Westminster is. So our active approach to learning not only includes an active approach by our professors, but as a campus, we really encourage our students and provide opportunities for our students to be able to develop a set of transferable skills that will make you successful, whether you're a theater major or a philosophy major like I was, or a business or education or nursing major. Um, in addition to these active professors, this campus-wide emphasis on active and experiential learning, we also have state-of-the-art facilities to support our active approach. Um, right now, we, we have students in our brand new Meldrum Science Center. Um, it's, it was opened this summer, and our first classes are happening this fall. And um, this is a, an opportunity where students get to walk into the first LEED Platinum certified building on a college campus in the state of Utah. Um, they get to use our undergraduate research labs, five of which are um, set aside just for undergraduate work. Um, 14 of the 16 classrooms are fully lab integrated. Um, so there's a lot available with our Meldrum Science Center, and we'd love for you to come see it. We also have our Center for Financial Analysis. This is in our Gore School of Business, and this is a, an opportunity for our students to have first-hand professional research experiences. When you walk into the Center for Financial Analysis, or CFA as we call it, <laughs> um, you are probably going to be a little starstruck by the really pretty stock ticker boards, the real-time stock information. Um, we have TVs on with MSNBC or, or CNBC on all the time. But more than that, what you can't see is the set of market research data that our students get to use. This is professional information so that you as a student in our Center for Financial Analysis get the same experience as a professional out there in the real world. And we have student testimonials that talk about how their experience in the CFA prepared them to be incredibly competitive out there in the real world when they're on Wall Street or doing some different jobs in finance. We have a lot of world-class facilities on campus, but the last one I'll mention specifically right now are our nursing facilities. They were finished in just 2006, so they're still pretty new. Um, and within our nursing facilities, we have, in addition to technology-rich classrooms, um, simulated labs. So as a nursing student, you get to walk into what seems like a clinic um, and work on adult-sized and infant-sized human simulators um, that do everything but die and sweat. So your professors get to program them 
um, to respond to you and you get to practice diagnostics, different, different procedures that nurses might do on simulated people before even walking out into the real world to do um, our clinical placements that our, our nursing students do. So that's just a, a, a short list of some of the facilities we have on campus that help you to really make the most of our active approach. Um, before we move on to talk about the community, I do want to talk about some specific programs, um, just some nuts and bolts in regards to academics. So first of all, um, like I mentioned, we have over 70 academic programs that range the gamut from business, nursing, education, to arts and sciences. Um, we also have some special programs I'd like to highlight. First is our honors program. You've heard us mention honors before. Um, honors at Westminster is um, different than what you might anticipate at some schools. Um, at Westminster itself is that small private liberal arts college, so the honors program had to be something in addition to that. At its core, the honors program is seven team-taught interdisciplinary seminars um, that prepare students to think and write so that they'll be really um, strong applicants for graduate school. And there are a lot of extracurricular opportunities available with the honors program as well. It requires a separate application and you have to have at least a 26 ACT or the equivalent SAT in order to apply. Um, as you heard, Annie's in the honors program, so Annie, why don't you tell the students a little bit about your experience? Okay, great. Well, I am always really impressed with the honors professors and the honors students. And one of the things that I think is the most important about the honors program is it requires you to be an active participant in your own learning. So when an honors student goes to class every day, when I go to class every day, I know that I'm expected to have read the material, to understand, and to have learned from it so that I can participate in the discussion and you know maybe engage in a debate with my fellow students or even my professors. Um, because of this, I feel like the honors program really helps um, refine the skills that I need in order to apply to a graduate school. I am required to vocalize my thoughts um, coherently. You have to be really articulate in order that your fellow peers and classmates as well as your professors understand you. And as I said before, they really, really refine your writing skills so that you can not only express your thoughts and um, learn and understand them, you can also communicate them effectively. I'm glad you brought that up. I think a key part of the honors program is not just this discussion based, which is you'll find in, in classes across campus, but it's being in that discussion oriented environment with two professors from different disciplines mm -hmm. who push you differently. Um, and also, as, as Annie keeps mentioning, your peers are an important part of this, this program. The honors program is com incredibly competitive. Um, we only have an incoming cohort of about 35 students every year, and um, we had about 100 students apply last year for a spot in the freshman um, cohort of the honors program. Uh, so what happens is you're not only in this environment with two professors who are, are pushing you, um, but you're also surrounded by similarly academically gifted and academically ambitious students, which makes for a very challenging learning Absolutely. environment. Absolutely. Um, there's another program available at Westminster um, for students that are academically ambitious or academically gifted, but maybe don't get so excited about the thought of critically analyzing texts and really working on ideas. Um, for students that get excited about the idea of applying ideas, um, we have something called the Scholars Program. It's also competitive to get into. It requires a separate application. Um, at its heart, the Scholars Program is based on what's called the problem-based learning approach. So rather than this discussion-oriented classroom as in the Honors Program, the Scholars Program offers an opportunity for students to learn content through discussion and debates and such, but really focuses on the application of that content um, using a real-world problem. Um, a lot of students that are interested in community service or are interested in medical school would find the, the Scholars Program to be a very good fit for them as well. There's an incoming cohort of about 20 students each year, um, and the competitiveness of this program is increasing year by year as well. Um, in addition to our Scholars and Honors programs, a couple of unique programs also include our Learning Community Program um, and our Aviation Program. Learning communities are actually uh, a program that every single freshman uh, experiences, um, and it's based off of the honors program setup. Um, really, at the heart of the learning community is the idea that as a freshman, you'll come to Westminster and you will be able to build roots. You'll you'll be able to get a community right from the beginning. Uh, so. In fact, two days before you even start class, um, during our four-day long freshman orientation, you get the opportunity to meet the students and professors in your learning community. Um, at its core, a learning community is made up of either your honors cohort, your scholars cohort, or two of your four classes that you would take during your freshman semester and the two professors that make up those classes. 
to enhance that community and feel, we also have the same 20 students in both of those two classes. So each learning community is roughly 20-ish students or so, um, and it has at least one if not two professors that are part of it. That second day of orientation, you meet your learning community over dinner or ice cream or a board game or something along those lines. Um, and then the fourth day of orientation, you get to go serve um, what's called our Helping Hands Day. So you get to build relationships within your learning community um, before you even set, classroom, set your foot in the classroom as well. And then you're in class as well as doing extracurricular activities with your learning community your freshman year. So throughout your freshman year, you get to feel what it's like to be part of the Westminster community even as a brand new freshman. Um, that's the key of, of learning communities. There are also opportunities to engage with those professors as mentors, to do service learning. Um, and there's a lot to talk about in regards to that program, but it's a, a unique one that would be available to you no matter what as a Westminster freshman. Um, lastly, I mentioned aviation. We are one of the only liberal arts colleges to offer an aviation program in the country. And um, our aviation program is top notch. Our students fly out of Class B airspace right out there by the Salt Lake International Airport. We have our own fleet of planes as well as a set of um, aviation simulators on campus. And um, as aviation students, our students also develop those important transferable skills I mentioned earlier. So regardless of where they go in their future career, they're set up to be either incredibly effective pilots or able to pursue another career if they choose to. Um, so those are a couple of our unique programs. Our top programs across the board, campus-wide, include the sciences, which would include pre-med and pre-vet and pre-dental, um, psychology, nursing, economics, finance, English, and education. Um, last but not least, I do want to mention a couple of ways that our students really actively engage in learning, um, one of which is our May term program. Uh, Westminster is on a, a schedule where you have a fall semester from the beginning of fall or the beginning of um, the fall till around December, a spring semester from the beginning of January till the end of April, and at the end of April you're actually done. Um, you finish your year and you can go off and do study abroad or do an internship or if you're from out of state go home. Um, but uh, there is a term during the month of May, we call it May term, that's about four weeks long, completely optional. Um, most of our students choose to do it though. One of the reasons is because it's free. If you've been a full-time student in the fall, you've earned two free credits. If you are a full-time student again in the spring, you earn two free credits. And by the way, full-time refers to 12 to 16 credits per semester. So as a traditional college student, you would be full-time. Um, so by the time you reach May term, you have four credits that you can redeem for free um, to take May term classes. The other reason a lot of students choose to do May term is because it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can either take classes on campus that are off the beaten track, kind of fun, funky things that might inspire you. Um, classes like the history of rock and roll, or um, yoga and spirituality, or a marketing class that uses the TV show Seinfeld as their case studies. Um, I'll, I'll let Annie tell you a little bit about one of the classes she took. But before she does, uh, the other option for main term is to do what's called a study experience trip. And that is where you have a class worth those full four credits that's combined with a trip somewhere to help you to better learn what it is you're learning. So business finance classes go to Australia to study the Australian dollar. Nursing classes go to Peru to study what it's like to give health care in a different um, cultural and socioeconomic situation. Science classes go to Hawaii to study the geology of the islands and the biology of the, the animals that live there and the chemistry of volcanoes. Um, of course, during these trips, you're scuba diving and eating great food, and if you're in Germany, you're having bratwurst and having a great time with your professors. Um, but you're also going on these trips um, to specifically look at these locations through that lens. And a lot of students come back saying they had a, an experience of a lifetime. I know I did when I was a student. Um, but let's go back to those classes, Annie. Tell me a little bit about a midterm class you took. Absolutely. Well, I love that Sharia said that most students um, take midterm because this is like the reward at the end of the year. Every student on campus is so excited for May term and you hear about it as soon as you get to freshman orientation. Everybody's like, just wait until May term, it's awesome. So I took um, May term classes last May and I took two because I had four credits available um, for free. Um, so I took a class about Oscar Wilde and a class called Ecological Eating. And Ecological Eating was one of the coolest experiences I've had at Westminster so far. Basically, it was a class that revolved around learning how to make um, conscious choices and food choices that would help our environment and basically the world. Um, one of the best things about this class was that every day we showed up and we got to make a local and organic meal. And so I was fed for the week um, off of this class, which is really amazing. And then over this, you know, amazing food that we had just made, we got to discuss issues um, like 
you know, industrial farming, or we got to realize and understand what the difference is between organic and non-organic food products. And so it was really great because it was a fun learning experience and that I got to go eat this great food every week. Um, but I also got to learn a lot about the way our economy functions and how that um, really impacts our environment. So that really sounds fun. like so much fun. Yeah, and amazing. you got credit for this class? Absolutely. Towards graduation? Towards graduation. May term is so great, and a lot of students do come to Westminster, somewhat based on that. Um, we'd love for you to come learn more about that, but for now, just a, a couple quick notes on some other academic program. So you heard me mention these classes that go across the world for um, different class for um, different major term opportunities. Well, we also do have study abroad, um, which is an opportunity for a student to go for a semester, a year, or a summer to another country. And we have students everywhere from China to Madagascar to Brazil and um, to um, places in Western Europe, Ireland, all over the world. So if you want to study abroad, that's absolutely an option. Um, two other notes quickly on um, active learning, and then we'll go on to talk about our community. First of all, one of the hallmarks of a Westminster experience is your active learning will not just stop at the classroom doors. It's going to go on outside onto the campus and really into the world. Almost all of our students do some sort of undergraduate research before graduating or some sort of internship or both. Uh, so if you're coming to Westminster, you can plan on having the opportunity to apply what you're learning in a way that's intensely interesting to you and is also going to enable you to build your network and hone in your skills so that when you're applying for graduate school or that job you really want after college, um, you not only have the degree to prove you're prepared for what they want, um, but you'll have that network and the resume um, showing your internship or research or both of those experiences. So, as you can hear, our active approach to learning is a big reason for Westminster students, well, for students to choose to become Westminster students, um, but our community is a big part of it as well. Um, as, as you heard Annie say, that's what attracted her in a large way. Um, Westminster's actually been ranked as the 13th best um, campus for uh, quality of life west of the, the Mississippi. Uh, so we're, we're recognized for having an amazing quality of life on campus. And we've also been ranked as the 15th best town gown relations. Um, that ranking refers to the fact that our students feel like we've got a great relationship with Sugar House, Salt Lake City, uh, basically the town surrounding us. Um, truthfully, our community really is a big part of Westminster, and so I'd like to give you a taste into what the community is about. Um, first of all, right here on campus, we have over 50 student clubs that range the gamut from academic to service to sport-oriented clubs, um, fun clubs like the poker club and the knitting club, um, political clubs, religious clubs, a theater club, music club, um, all sorts of opportunities for you to engage in your interests or learn more about new interests. At the beginning of each year, there's a club fair, so it's really easy for you to sign up and start with a new club. Um, we also have a really active student government on campus. It's called the ASWC, which stands for Associated Students of Westminster College. They help oversee all those clubs, but they also do something called Wild Wednesdays. Every single Wednesday, they're doing something crazy on campus for students. Uh, what sorts of Wild Wednesdays have you done recently? Oh my gosh, it's amazing what the student government provides. I mean, I've done everything from, you know, go to a nice film screening to cosmic bowling, um, which is when we rent out an entire bowling alley and we all bowl in neon. Fun. <laughs> I've also seen comedians, I mean, they provide amazing activities. And this is a weekly event, so you know that no matter what, pretty much every student that's on campus is going to be at a Wild Wednesday. It's amazing. Wild Wednesday is a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a good time when I was a student. <laughs> Um, the student government also sponsors all sorts of other weekend activities. Uh -huh. um, they had a Halloween dance where they bought out an entire, was it a hotel or a club this time? It was a club. Mm, bought out an entire club <laughs> in downtown Salt Lake City for our students to have a Halloween bash at. Um, they also have a partnership with the Salt Lake Film Society and they have a film and lecture series um, where they'll bring different independent films on campus and you get to go not only watch the film on campus but also do Q&A with the director or the subject of the documentary or something along those lines. Um, the student government also helps organize um, a lot of other really fun activities on campus, but there are other departments on campus that do a lot of really cool things too that add to our community. Um, we've got a great lecture series, everything from a poetry lecture series to a diversity lecture series, um, an international lecture series, a business lecture series. Um, lecture series might sound boring, but what it is, is we bring experts on campus 
um, to meet with you as students. If you're in the honors program or different programs, you have the opportunity to sit down and do roundtables with these experts. And then they do a larger presentation to the whole campus community some evening of the week. Already this year, we've had a director from the Cato Institute, a bureau chief from the New York Times. Um, later this year, we'll, we'll hear from a professor from Cambridge, a professor from um, Stanford, a world-renowned expert on Hinduism, a National Geographic photographer, um, really cool people that come on campus and share about their expertise. In addition to those lecture series, we also have an awesome set of student-produced plays and um, other theatrical pre uh, presentations, which Annie's a part of. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's a lot of fun. Um, obviously, these are extracurricular activities. So right now, I'm actually in uh, what will be the fall musical, and we're opening next Thursday. So a little nerve-wracking, really excited. Um, but what's great, what I think is really great about um, the extracurricular plays um, that we have on campus is that they're really inclusive. Um, we don't like to exclude people that aren't theater majors or theater minors or music majors and music minors. We really like to incorporate a lot of diversity into our program. And so even if you're a physics major on campus, we really encourage you to audition for shows if maybe you do have a passion for music or you're really interested in acting. And so it provides this really great community that's not you know, exclusive. It's very, very diverse and a lot of fun. And very talented, too, because the people that are auditioning are the ones that love it. Right? Absolutely. Um, same goes with the music programs. We have a lot of concerts on campus, um, student produced as well as professional concerts. And if you want to be in the choir or in the orchestra, the jazz combo or flute choir, um, it's the same sort of thing as Annie mentioned. If you have a passion for it, regardless of what your major is, you can audition for these programs. We do have music and theater majors that are doing this as well, as you know. Um, <laughs> but it's a really inclusive campus community that encourages you to pursue your passion. Um, in addition, if you're not the arts and, and theater type student, we also have a lot of athletic events going on. Actually, we have students that cross both boundaries, though. They're Absolutely. athletic and artsy. Um, <laughs> but if, if you're athletic in any way, uh, there's a lot going on campus. We've got um, a whole set of excellent um, men's and women's sports teams, ranging from basketball, volleyball, golf, um, ski and snowboarding, cross country, track and field, soccer. Um, the list keeps growing because our program keeps growing. Most of these um, sports teams compete in the NAIA Division I. Um, we also have a really fun um, set of intramurals on campus. Have you done any of those yet? Or have you been too busy with theater? I've been a little busy, but I'm thinking about going out for the intramural volleyball team, to ah. be quite honest. <laughs> well, it's a lot of fun. Intramurals are an opportunity to just have fun, like Annie's saying. Yeah. Um, you make a team, and you get to compete against other students. The professors, our dean of, of student life, always plays. Um, and other <laughs> sports like volleyball, soccer, basketball, or some fun things like inner tube water polo, ping pong, dodgeball. Um, so intramurals are a really good time to just sort of let, let off some steam. Um, also, there are opportunities to cheer on our student team. Um, our student section is called The Nest. We're the Griffins at Westminster. Um, and The Nest is our student section. So if you're the type to go cheer on a basketball team um, or you want to go cheer on our, our soccer team, The Nest is where you will be. Um, in addition to athletics and arts and, arts and theater opportunities, um, all the student activities going on um, through the ASWC and other student clubs, we also have a huge emphasis on community service. If you want to make a difference in people's lives, that's kind of what you like to do. This is an excellent community to join. Westminster was one of only 115 schools nationwide to be recognized with what's called the President's Community Service Honor Roll with Distinction. This means that our students and our community does a ton of community service. Last year it was something like 42,000 hours, but over the last several years it's been at least 30,000 hours of community service every year. And that service ranges from helping with the Homeless Center downtown to community service projects on Mayterm. Um, where students are able to uh, build orphanages um, or help do basic medical care and things along those lines. Um, so all of these sorts of opportunities are available to you as a student here at Westminster. I think the last thing I mentioned about the community is just how diverse it is. Our students come from all over the world and have all sorts of interests. They're all drawn to this particular environment. Um, nearly half of our freshman class this fall um, was from out of state. And um, we had 36 states represented overall, 14 different countries represented by international students. We even have something like 30-some-odd um, USSA athletes on our campus right now. It's an incredibly diverse and active community here at Westminster, and that really adds when you guys are all getting involved together on these activities we just mentioned. Yeah. Annie, what's your favorite thing about the community here? Well, I think that because it's such an active community, um, I have to say that my favorite thing is the people, the people that are involved in this community, because Westminster really does attract 
enthusiastic students and professors, faculty members that want to be involved in some way. And so it's really great to be on a campus that's full of people that want to be active like me because everybody is really enthusiastic and getting involved. Everybody wants to go to the Wild Wednesday activities. Everybody wants to participate in some sort of community service or be on a sports team or be involved in theater and music. And so it's really great because every student here, every faculty member here is passionate. And I love that. It really adds a lot. Yeah. And, and you can imagine when you combine that kind of a community with the academic opportunities we talked about at the beginning of this presentation, what results is a really successful college experience. You get out of college what you want out of college. And namely, you make those friends, you make those memories, and you are prepared to be successful in your next step of life. Um, so Westminster does have a really great record of what we call success, um, preparing our students to move on to that next step of life and do so well. Um, a couple of stats to give you an idea. Westminster has consistently been ranked as one of the best colleges in America, according to the Princeton Review. Um, we are also consistently ranked as one of the top 20 best buys in the United States, according to U.S. News & World Report. Um, we have a higher percentage of graduates with internship experience compared to any other school in the state of Utah. We also have the best four-year graduation rates of any, other, any school in the state of Utah. Um, and we have a really impre impressive track record. At Westminster, we like to say that we don't just measure our success in um, the numbers and statistics, but in who our graduates are and what they end up doing. Um, for example, our students have been hired by some of these companies, um, American Red Cross, Ballet West, Boeing, Ernst & Young, um, General Electric, Goldman Sachs, Huntsman Cancer Institute, Intermountain Healthcare, PricewaterhouseCoopers, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association, school districts statewide, and of course many others. Our students also go on to impressive graduate school programs. To name a few, our students are at Columbia University, Georgetown, Georgia Tech, Harvard, King's College, NYU, Notre Dame, Stanford, UC Berkeley, the University of Chicago, the University of London, Purdue, and Yale. We also have a really great set of resources on campus here to help prepare you to be one of these successful students. Um, we have an alumni mentoring program where we pair you up with Westminster alumni that are successful in your area of interest and help you to learn what you need to know to be successful out there. We also have a Career Resource Center here on campus that has all sorts of programs available for you, one of which is called Career Passages, which is a program you can start as a freshman to help learn those skills that you need to know to be successful out there. Um, networking skills, resume writing skills, you get opportunities for internships, career workshops, everything along those lines. So that by the time you graduate, you're set up to walk out these doors here at Westminster and move on to your next step successfully. So, you can see, um, there are three really great reasons that a lot of students choose Westminster as their first choice college our active approach to learning, our vibrant community, and the record of success that we have in preparing our students to move on to that next step. Um, if Westminster seems like a really good fit for you, um, or potentially you're interested, then listen carefully. I'm going to walk through the admissions experience with you um, and tell you what you need to do to apply. So first of all, Westminster is on rolling admissions. We have a priority deadline of November 15th. Um, we require an application that enables us to do a holistic review. You can apply online um, as well as through the common application. Um, and in addition to that application form, we need your high school and college transcripts, um, if you've done any concurrent enrollment. Um, we need your SAT or ACT scores. We just take the highest score of um, all of your tests that you've taken. We need a recommendation from a guidance counselor or um, from an academic teacher. We accept up to three recommendations if you want to submit supplemental recommendations. And we require an essay. Um, all of these pieces come together and enable us to do a holistic review process, um, which helps us to get a feel for who you are and what you'll do and how you'll fit into Westminster's community. Ultimately, we're looking for students that will fit us well here and end up leaving here and being successful. To give you an idea, though, the average admitted Westminster student has about a 3.5 GPA on an unweighted 4.0 cumulative scale and has about a 25 ECT. Um, for those of you that would like to apply and you're a little nervous about financial aid or scholarships, um, listen carefully because now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. Um, Westminster is dedicated to assisting you to make a, a Westminster education affordable. Like I said, we're one of the best buys in the country, according to U.S. News & World Report. So first thing that happens is after you submit an application for admission, if you're admitted, we will automatically use that application to consider you for academic merit scholarships. These scholarships range from about $6,000 per year up to $14,000 per year. So that's a little over half tuition. They're four-year scholarships, and they are um, automatically renewed year after year as long as you're a full-time student. Um, in addition to these scholarships, we also offer over 500 continuing student scholarships um, that would be available to you after your first year. So you can get it towards your sophomore, junior, and senior years. 
Um, to give you an idea, about a thousand students apply for those every year, so the likelihood of getting one is fairly high, especially if you continue to be um, really good at Westminster like you've done in, in high school. We also offer individual financial counseling. If those scholarships aren't quite enough, don't worry. The average financial aid package at Westminster, once you included scholarships and need-based aid, um, was over $21,000 for a freshman entering this last fall. So if you would like some individual financial aid counseling, that's available. All you need to do is call our financial aid office. It's 801-832-2500. Again, that's 801-832-2500. Um, we do require you to file the FAFSA if you'd like need-based aid in the form of grants, um, so federal loans, and work study. Um, and if you do file that um, come spring, we ask that you file it before April 15th at the very latest. Um, but if you can file it in January, our first financial aid uh, packages go out actually the, the last week of February. So we would love to be able to get you a financial aid package soon. That's why we need your FAFSA in as early as possible. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, it's November 3rd. I'd love to plan a little bit more about my financial aid at Westminster. Um, we have a tool for you to do that as well. It's called an early aid estimator. I'll provide a link for you at the end of this presentation today. Um, but the early aid estimator is basically a pre-FAFSA that you can do um, to get an idea of the types of grants, um, federal student loans, and work study that you could qualify for here at Westminster. Um, again, what I would recommend is doing that early aid estimator and then taking advantage of the individual financial aid counseling that we have here. We can help you make a financial plan now if you do your application for admission and you do an early aid estimator. Lastly, I want to give you a little bit of hope. If you're worried about money and attending Westminster, um, just know this. Over 90% of the students that came to Westminster and were admitted had um, scholarships and over 98% of our admitted students received financial aid. So although our tuition fees is roughly $26,000 or so for, for room here this year and room and board's about $7,000 um, for this year, 2% um, of the students here actually pay that price. Um, at Westminster, like I said, we're dedicated to making a, this quality education affordable for you. Um, so if you get your application for admission in before our priority deadline on November 15th, Submit an early aid estimator and then allow us to assist you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to attend Westminster if you're a good fit for our community and our college. So lastly, um, on this last slide you will see um, the two links. One of them is to our application and one of them is to our early aid estimator. Um, oh, there's just one. Oh, I, I apologize. So the one to the application, as you can see, is www.westminstercollege.edu slash apply, A-P-P-L-Y. Um, the early aid estimator link is actually on our website. It's really easy to get to. You can follow that link to the admissions website, the apply link. And then on the left-hand side of our webpage, you should see financial aid. If you click that, you will be, you'll be able to see our early aid estimator and click on that and that will bring you to the early aid estimator site on our website. Now we'd like to begin some Q&A, so for those of you that might have questions, go ahead and submit those. Um, what we're going to do here, as you can see, I don't have a computer right next to me. Um, my colleagues back there are taking the questions, so she's going to write it down and tell me, and then I'll tell you the answers. All right, we have our first question. I want to be an architect or a computer engineer. Should I apply here? Would this be a good school to attend? Well, I'm going to split that into two answers. I want to be an architect, and I want to be a computer engineer. In regards to architecture, we don't have an architecture program. So my answer to you is gonna be this. If you are 99% positive you want to be an architect, go find an architect program. If you're 90% positive or less that you want to be an architect, I would recommend trying Westminster um, for two big reasons. Uh, the first one is, like I said, no matter what you end up studying here, you're going to get a set of really important transferable skills that'll make you a competitive graduate. Um, for graduate programs, if you decide to go on to something in the architect area, um, you can also do what's called a customized major here, so if you have a really specific desire in mind, if we have programs available to you in different academic programs, you can sit down with a professor here and create the major that will help you to do exactly what you want to do. Um, and so that's number one, there is a lot available here. You might find a major that you didn't realize you wanted to do, but that leads me to point number two. Annie, when you were first a student here, um, how many different classes did you take? A lot of different subjects? Absolutely. Lots of different fields of study. And would you say you were able to maybe find some interest in subjects you didn't realize you had before? Yes. Anything in particular? Um, I might 
come out of Westminster College with a philosophy minor that I had no idea that I was interested in at all. Um, and so that was a big one for me where I was like, oh, philosophy, well, that's interesting. I had no idea that I was at all, you know, ready to pursue that. So. That's actually a really common answer for a Westminster student. Um, I had a friend who showed up here thinking she was going to do an English major as a freshman, um, and through her involvement with her professors, this active approach to learning that we pri you know, we prioritize here, she actually discovered neuroscience was a better fit. <laughs> totally not ex expected for her, but now she's finishing her third year, I believe, at um, literally the top PhD program for her particular area of neuroscience in the country. Um, so what I would recommend is if you're not exactly sure you want to be an architect, but you like drawing, or you like math, or you like thinking about problem solving, or you like cities, come to Westminster and do some exploration and see how professors might help you to find the real good fit for you. So that's my first answer. The second part of your question, computer engineer. We do have a program here called our Engineering 3-2 program. Um, what this is is an opportunity for students to be able to come to Westminster and do three years of an undergraduate degree in addition to the prerequisites required for engineering school. Um, so as a computer engineer interest, you come and probably do a computer science degree, uh, and you would work very closely with our professor who's the advisor for the 3-2 program. Now it's called 3-2 because you spend three years here, and then you go to for two more years at one of our partner schools. We are partnered with the Vitterby School of Engineering at USC in Southern California, and with Washington University School of Engineering in St. Louis. Um, you go to one of these two schools, and you finish out your computer engineering degree in those two years. So at the end of five years, what happens is you get an engineering degree from your school of choice, whichever one you went to, you get a Westminster degree, um, a bachelor's in, say, computer science, and you have that set of transferable skills we're talking about. One of my colleagues in the admissions business used to be, um, he was a, what was he, a director of admissions at an engineering school back in Virginia. And he used to say that when he'd go meet with hiring managers for engineering firms, one of their biggest complaints was this. They said, your engineers are brilliant. They can do engineering really well. But when I send them in to you know, put a, 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 a grant application in or to talk to my investors or to talk with our, our CEO, they can't do it. And the problem is this, a lot of engineers are really great at math and science, and they're brilliant in their field, but when it comes to interfacing with their manager, who might have gotten an MBA instead of an engineering degree, or with their investors who hold the key to whether they get to do their engineering projects, they don't have those skills necessary to be as effective as they could be had they had the opportunity to develop those skills. These communication skills are what you will get at Westminster College because we're a comprehensive liberal arts college and because we have those learning goals that emphasize um, developing exactly those skills. So I hope that helps answer your question a little bit. If you have any questions, now would be the time to ask. <laughs> Otherwise, Annie and I will just start talking about stuff. <laughs> Oh, it looks like we've got a question now, so hold on one second. Ah, so the question is, tell me about your art program. Um, at Westminster, we've got actually several options for an art program. Um, we have a Bachelor of Arts, a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and our Arts Administration degree. So there are several degrees, depending on how intensely interested you are in doing art. If you want to become an artist, a studio artist, maybe have your own studio one day, something like that, um, then you want to do a Bachelor of Fine Arts, which emphasizes studio work. You can do an emphasis within pottery, so ceramics, photography, or visual arts, drawing and painting. Um, if you are more thinking about being an art teacher, you want to teach art in high school, you want to maybe go get a master's in art, or maybe you um, just really like art and feel like you want to major in that, you can do a Bachelor of Arts in art. And that does have a teaching emphasis available. Um, or, if you really like art, but maybe you just want to be in the art industry, you can do our Arts Administration degree, which is a hybrid between an art program and a business degree. Um, are you doing? No, you're just doing a theater major, right? I was initially an arts administration major, but it did switch. But it's an amazing program. I'm really impressed with it. What did you like so much about it? I love that it has um, the idea of a creative process combined with practical skills. Um, I really liked the idea that I could, you know, pursue what I love, which is the theater. I'm really passionate about that. But also get, you know, basically half a business degree so that if I wanted to go out and manage my own theater, I could do that. Or, you know, if someone wanted to go work in an art gallery, set up an art gallery. I really liked that it had that practical application um, so that you knew that you could be in, like, a managerial status or some sort of administration job. Exactly. It opens up the opportunity for you to be in the art field, whether you're in music, theater, um, photography, um, visual art, like 
painting and drawing or whether you want to do um, ceramics as well. Absolutely. It's a good question. Got another question. What business majors do you offer? We offer a whole slew of business majors. <laughs> Everything from accounting and international business to finance, economics, economics pre-law, management, marketing. Um, if you're interested in business, we probably have your area of interest as a major here. Um, every business student does a core business program, and then your upper division classes are centered on that area of interest that you have. I would also mention that we have three special institutes or departments within our business school that aren't academic per se. Um, they aren't like classes you have to get for credit, uh, but they offer a lot of opportunities for students to develop their business skills. Those would be our Center for Financial Analysis, which we talked about earlier, our Institute for New Enterprise, and our Center for China America Business Studies. Our Institute for New Enterprise offers workshops, seminars, one-on-one um, -on -one interfacing with CEOs and founders, a business plan competition, um, a lot of opportunities to be able to develop your skills as a budding entrepreneur or to be able to learn how to become an entrepreneur. Um, our Center for China America Business Studies is, has a special partnership with two top universities in China. And we have exchange students that are affiliated with this program from China as well as from our campus to those universities in China. We do seminars about Chinese culture. We have Chinese language classes. So if you're interested in the global economy and particularly in China, um, which happens to be a big deal as you guys all know, um, <laughs> our Center for China America Business Studies would definitely effectively position you to move out into that, that global um, economic situation. New question, what is your mascot? Well, if you heard me earlier, I quickly mentioned where the griffins. What's a griffin, Annie? Griffin is a mythical creature. <laughs> um, it is a combination, let me hope that I'm correct here, is a combination of a large bird, um, I think we assume like a really big eagle. Absolutely. And that's the head. And a lion. Uh -huh. Oh, good. Yeah, so <laughs> this, is a, this is a creature that has the head of an eagle and the body of a lion, and obviously some pretty powerful instincts apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so I, it's supposed to inspire. You, actually, our athletic symbol is pretty terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Big claws, big teeth. Very scary. It's supposed to inspire fear and strength and power and everything along those lines in their students. So we're the Griffins, um, <laughs> and that is why, like I mentioned, our student section is called the Nest. Um, but you will see a griffin running around on campus. In fact, if you watch our university TV video, um, which is on our website, um, it kind of gives you a virtual tour of Westminster. The griffin's in that, so go watch that. Yeah. Another question. Are your athletic programs competitive? Depends on the program. Um, our athletic program at large is developing in an amazing way. Some of our programs are already very well established. Um, in terms of um, the most competitive programs, in, in, in terms of getting into... Um, basketball is incredibly competitive. Our men's team plays in the NAIA Division I. They were ranked fourth in the nation last year. Um, right now they're ranked 10th. It moves all over. The right now they're ranked 10th. 12th. 12th, that's right. Our women's team is ranked 10th. Um, sorry, I've got my helpers back there. So right now our men's team is ranked 10th, 12th. Our women's team is ranked 10th. Um, so if you're interested in playing competitive basketball here at Westminster College, um, be ready to show your best. And I would say connect with your admissions counselor, ASAP, so we can get you connected with the sports programs here. Um, our ski and snowboarding also is incredibly competitive. Our women's team won the national competition these last two years. And to put that in perspective, this is their third year as a team. So um, it's an incredibly competitive program as well. Um, our men's soccer team in particular is very interesting because they range levels of competitiveness. Um, we have everything from competitive club play to NAIA Division I play. Um, and they vary in what their rankings are every year, but what's nice about that program is you have the opportunity to really dive in or to sort of taper off and be just part of one of our competitive traveling club teams as well. Our men's lacrosse team is um, in a very exciting position. They're still technically a club team at Westminster because there is no lacrosse in the NAIA. Um, they play in the MCLA, which is the Men's Collegiate Lacrosse Association. Um, but for being a club team, they're actually they're well funded on campus. Um, we have scholarships available for lacrosse. Um, and in 2008, I believe, they won the MCLA Men's National Championship. Um, so if you're interested in playing lacrosse for our men's team, it's very competitive. Our women's lacrosse team is, is blossoming, as is our women's soccer team. So they're not quite as hard to get into, but um, definitely growing in their competitive nature, too. Um, did I miss anything? Oh, okay. So if you have more questions about athletics, let us know. Otherwise, I have a new question. Tell me about Sugar House. Um, well, first of all, we talked about Sugar House being an incredibly eclectic, fun, funky neighborhood. I love living in Sugar House, even as staff. I just live... 
10 minutes down that way. It's an amazing neighborhood. There was a farmer's market over the summer. You'll be, if you walk around um, the neighborhood, you'll always see people out walking their dogs, going for runs. Um, it's a very active, uh, vibrant, kind of fun neighborhood. One of my favorite things is within walking distance of campus, you have about four or five different coffee shops that range in personality. So you get to find your favorite coffee shop. Um, about five minutes that direction, you have Sugar House Park. So you can go grab a cup of coffee and then walk over to the park where they've got about what, like a mile and a half's worth of trailer on the outside of the yeah, park. I'd say it's even bigger than yeah, that. It's a like really that. big park. <laughs> there's a pond in the park. There's a couple big fields. There's pavilions to go grill if you want to go grill them. And the two girls on campus are taken up. Um, there uh, are oftentimes big events over in Sugar House Park. We, in fact, at the beginning of the school year, they had a huge carnival over there um, for our freshman students. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, they'll do um, 5Ks or walk-a-thons for um, service organizations over there, like the March of Dimes, for example. Um, we'll do some things like that. Uh, so Sugar House Park is really cool. And then within walking distance of campus, I mean, you've got, I mean, what are some of your favorite restaurants? I mean, by? there are amazing restaurants. I really love, um, okay, so there's like Noodles and Company, which is a perfect staple for like a college kid because it's pasta. It's amazing. <laughs> um, but I actually really like some of the more independent um, restaurants that we have. We have a really cool raw restaurant, oh, yeah. which is um, really interesting to go to, like get a group of friends and it's, it's amazing because all of their food is raw and vegan, so that's a really interesting choice. Um, we also have Sugar House Coffee, which I spend a ton of time at. I think a lot of Westminster students <laughs> do. And they have everything from chili to coffee to pastries, um, so that's a really fun place to hang out. Love that. And then just the Sugar House neighborhood in general, I love walking around. We have a couple of really cool independent bookstores as well as a great Barnes & Noble, so that's great. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's really great about being a Westminster student in Sugar House, our student government's partnered up with a lot of these local businesses, yeah. so you can get discounts as a Westminster student at Noodles & Company, at Panda Express, at um, some of the local places like the King's English, um, and some of the local coffee shops like Sugar House Coffee. They actually had a free Westminster coffee day. Wasn't that last week? That was so much fun. Yeah, as a Westminster student, you can go get free coffee and the live, mu live music, is that Absolutely. Right? We had some live music. In fact, I was one of the performers. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> really fun neighborhood to be a part of. Um, I just got another question asking if we have residence halls on campus. Absolutely. In fact, we give priority housing to freshmen, so if you want to live on campus as a freshman, as long as you get your housing application in by May 15th, you will have a spa on campus here. Um, we have two different options for residence halls. You can either be in the traditional freshman style residence halls where you've got a roommate, um, it's all girls on a floor, you share a big bathroom and a big living area and a kitchen area, um, and you really get to know each other pretty well. Um, I remember, were you on campus your freshman year? I was. Yeah, how'd that go? It was so much fun. Um, I lived in a traditional freshman style residence hall. I lived in Hogle Hall, and my roommate and I have become best friends. We're actually living together this year as well. And it was amazing to live with all of these people. It is a little chaotic at times, but it is so much fun. We got together for group movie nights. We made cookies in our kitchen. Um, we put up little posters in the bathroom. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. If you ever envision college life, that's what their freshman residence halls are. Um, the other option is to live in what's called an apartment style residence hall. Um, this was traditionally reserved for upperclassmen, but now it's open to freshmen as well on a first come, first serve basis. So if you really want to live in an apartment style residence hall, you want to get your application in by like January, if possible. Yeah. Um, the apartment style residence halls have five or six rooms to an apartment, so you have your own room. Um, you share two bathrooms between the five or six of you, and you have a kitchen and a living room. It's actually pretty nice. If you go to our website and go to the residence life, page, you can see layouts of these different residence hall options and a lot more information about residence life on campus. Any other questions at this point? We've got about two minutes left. Well, I do want to mention, although you guys have been great to hop on College Week Live and come see us virtually from all your different places in the country, if it's possible for you to get out here to campus, um, that is one of the best things you can do in your college visit process. And we have a lot of different ways for you to do it. First of all, if you are a sophomore, junior, even a freshman in, in high school, or if you're a senior and you haven't started your application yet, you can come visit anytime, um, Monday through Friday between 8 and 5 or 6 in the evening, and even some Saturday mornings between 9 and 1, um, to come do a one-on-one -on -one visit with our our admissions counselors and also do a campus tour. It will take you about two hours total. Um, if you're coming from out of state, we can make that as robust of an event as you want to. We can set up class visits, we can help you meet with coaches, we can give you lunch in our student center and enable you to taste the food as well. So that's one option. Second option is to do uh, what we call Westminster Experience Open House. 
Um, that's when you can come on campus on a Saturday. Our next one is November 20th. We have one February, the first week of February and one the second week of May as well. And you get to come meet professors, meet current students, sit in on a mock class, hear from a panel of alumni and a panel of current students, and really feel out Westminster's community. Lastly, if you're a senior and you have been admitted already or you get admitted soon, we have an overnight stay option where you can actually come to campus one of those Monday through Thursday nights, anytime we're open as a school, and pretend you're a Westminster student for 24 hours. Class visits, staying overnight in the residence hall, eating on campus, wild Wednesdays, you name it, you get the experience. So if you'd like to come visit campus, if you click that link to the apply page, it'll bring you to our admissions page, and you'll see visit us. You can click, click that and submit any of the forms that I just mentioned, or you can call us at 801-832-2200. With that, we're done. Thank you. So it was nice to see you. <laughs>